Hello to my lovely subscribers. Um, we've had a much warmer week this week. Um, it's been very humid in London, but we've had some beautiful sunshine in amongst all the... I mean, it's grey again today. I'm recording this on Saturday. So um, I'm just going to start with uh, my old signature scent. So this is the Brocard perfume. On Granta it's called Listia Tomato, but I think this is a sense of nature perfume from that collection. And this is Tomato Leaf and Blackcurrant. So I absolutely love this perfume, as you can see. Like I've, I think... I think I've already said by the end of summer, I'm sure I'll be finished with this. Um, I have quite a few bottles of this. A lot of them just have like a small amount. So I've got one at work. I've got one at my mum and dad's. I've got another one in my cupboard. Um, I used to be a nightmare for starting bottles before ones had finished because I just kind of use it as an excuse to take the little bit that I had to other locations that I might need to be spraying myself. <laughs> um, especially because God bless Brockard, a lot of their perfumes, especially the ones from the Sense of Nature, they don't last particularly long. These are, um, I would describe these as kind of Brockard's kind of cheap and cheerful version of like the Hermes Jardin collection. Um, so it's that kind of vibe. It's like light, it's green, it's fresh, perfect for summer, but they've still got this lovely sweetness. These are a bit more linear, generally speaking, than the um, Hermes ones, which, I mean, they just they just change so much while you wear them. But these, um, again, I can't buy them at the moment because I can't get Broca, because I can't get Russian stuff. But when they come back, I really hope that I can get some more of these. I've got this one, I've got tomato and mint, I've got the winter apple, um, which is like a caramel apple and I've got one that I'm actually going to sell which is raspberry and oregano just because I don't like the way the ra the oregano smells with that raspberry I love the raspberry in it though I'm kind of sad they didn't do that with a, a different kind of herb you know maybe basil would have been better anyway so the notes <laughs> on this tomato leaf blackcurrant thyme mint musk orange and jasmine um I don't get loads of jasmine here. It's just beautiful. It's just absolutely lush, this one. I love it. Um, uh, as you can see, I've been through many, 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 many bottles of this. Um, it's just lush. Absolutely delicious. Speaking of lush, I'm not going to go into it, but I did get the Barbie perfume. I'm. Uh, you should hopefully have available to you, um, in fact, you will, because it's going up today, um, my proper review of this. Um, so I'm not going to talk about it now, but just so you know, this is something that I tested out this week. Um, and I didn't wear it for a whole day. I literally just tested it. Um, on my skin, though, so if you want to uh, know about this one, then th go watch the video, because it's much more in-depth. So I did want to take up time in this one okay let's see oh yeah I tried this this week so you might have seen my short this is called famous by Christopher Dark and I saw it and I knew just from the fact it was called famous and it's got this kind of gold on it I was like okay this is a dupe for fame by Paco Rabanne now I've smelt fame by Paco Rabanne in John Lewis I think the lady very kindly gave me a a little carded sample of it as well because when I was in there I thought it smelled pretty good and I, but I did say to her I was like the problem is I'm already wearing a perfume I'm in the, a room where people are spraying perfume so I can kind of smell elements of this but I don't I wouldn't like you know have faith that I would like this on my skin so I can't really spray it on there um but what I liked about fame the only thing I liked about it to be honest because I don't like the bottle very much I mean I kind of like the kitschness of them but um I guess it's maybe not so much that I don't like the bottle. It's more it's more like it's a bit tacky, but it's also quite fun. I find that with a lot of Paco Rabanne stuff. I quite like some of their weird stuff, even if it's not very attractive. I kind of like the ugliness of it. So when I smelt this in store, or not or the original in store, I loved the mango note in it. I didn't, I wasn't sure about all the other notes, but I loved the mango. Um, and so I really wanted to smell this one. So the notes listed here are bergamot, mango, jasmine, olibalum, sandal and vanilla. This smells like there's coconut in it for sure. I feel like this isn't identical to the original, but it's pretty close. And this one was like eight quid for 100 ml. It's not as strong, definitely, but it's very, very similar. Now, I was really hoping this one would work for me. But as with the real Paco Rabanne, when I got the carded sample home and tested that, the jasmine is way overpowering in this perfume for me. I'm just... Oh, jasmine, you know, it's like one of my arch nemesis in like all perfumes. <laughs> yeah, 
it definitely ha- it has a lovely mango. It has a kind of powdery. It's almost. <sighs> I'm just going to have a quick look to see if um, Dolce Garden has any jasmine. I can't remember. But I'm going to have a look because this smells like a combination of coconut and jasmine that has gone slightly powdery and sickly. And what I felt about Dolce Garden is that there's something in it that makes it smell like, you know, you get like yogurt coated like raisins and things like that. And it's got that kind of sour tang to it, but it's incredibly like sweet, like way sweet as well. It's got this weird like powdery dusty sugared yogurt smell about it um and that's what i'm getting from here which is unfortunately overpowering the mango note and the mango note is lovely and i do actually have this pretty much exactly the same problem with the original paco raban um with the original fame so famous is is quite quite similar i would totally recommend it if you don't want to spend like paco raban prices to get fame it's actually i mean it's not the most attractive label but i think it's actually kind of a nicer bottle um are these like the armani lids i can't remember but i've seen this shape of lid before definitely um let's have a look dolce garden oh no so there's not jasmine but there's, there's oh neroli and magnolia okay now in the original fame let me just have a look i didn't i didn't remember to get my uh carded sample out because i'm a ninny um but i'm keeping that carded sample because i want to um I want to share it with my husband um, and I will tell you about that when I get around to one of the other things that I tried this week. So this has the kind of woody jasmine that I don't like that, and it almost veers a little bit into that kind of um, tar-like smell that I really don't like. And I think there is a little bit of that in here and there's definitely some of that in fame. I couldn't smell that when I smelt it in store, but when I got it home and I tried it, um, on on paper from the actual carded sample i really could smell that one a lot so i feel like is there actual oh it's got jasmine and olibanum interesting do other people think that fame smells like it's got coconut in it there's something about the mixture of this one that i think smells coconutty but hmm interesting let me just have a look at what the original fame has been compared to um but yeah i mean i again if you like fame but you don't like the bottle or you don't want to pay that price then i think this christopher dark one's actually quite impressive i got it from makeup.uk yeah there's nothing i know that's really been compared to it there's just well i mean there's lots of things there's like a zara and an alien that i don't like and there's like one of is it yara but the yellow one i can't remember anyway so let's move on so this one is not going to stay with me because it just i don't I kind of keep going back to smell it the way that I did with like Dolce Garden, exactly that same kind of vibe where I was like, there's something in it that I like, but there's too much that I don't like going on. And it is that jasmine and that kind of sickly yogurty kind of vibe that I get from like powdery florals, you know, mixed with the fruit. But I really like the mango note in Fame and I really like the mango in Famous as well. So yeah, I think that's actually quite a good dupe. I'm, uh, I would happily recommend that to people, that one. What have we got now? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've actually made a proper dent in this because you do have to respray it all the time. So this is um, Aqua Colonia from 4711. This is their coconut, oh, coconut water and Yuzi. It's lush. It's so yummy. I wore the hell out of it to work when, when we had a really, really hot day. Um, it's very refreshing. It's got just enough sweetness. It's yuzu, but it does actually have a bit of a pineapple smell. It has a bit of a very kind of light and creamy, slightly creamy coconut. It says coconut water, but there's definitely, when it dries down, a slight sweet creaminess. But at first, yeah, coconut water... And you get this kind of citrusy vibe, but it really, to me, translates more like pineapple. So I think this one smells like yuzu, pineapple and coconut water. And then it dries down and you just get a hint of coconut cream. It is absolutely delicious. I totally love it. Um, I actually have ordered a backup bottle of this because I am... I'm aware that I'm going to absolutely rinse it. I know that I'm going to like spray it like a billion, billion times when I wear every time I wear it. And also, 
um i just know because it's a limited edition it's it's not necessarily the easiest thing to get and i don't think this will be one like some of the others where you can get them really easily in the uk because it took a year for this to even be available anywhere that sells to the uk so anyway yeah um i'm just trying to make these look a bit neater but i does it matter just try not to blind you as well with famous so um yeah I've, I've got a backup on the way of that one because i really love it and i would say in terms of longevity a couple of hours maybe i mean if you get it on your clothes i could definitely smell it but i think part of the joy of this one is it's one of those aqua colonias that's so juicy and watery and fresh that you want to keep pre-spraying it all the time because it's so refreshing and lovely but i could i could smell it through my mask on the tube so it's not like horribly weak um oh and then i wore this guy which I am increasingly falling in love with. I understand why people like this. This is fresh cream. This is the body spritz version of. So fresh cream by philosophy, really difficult to get in this country. I can't get hold of the, well, any of the actual perfumes of the fresh cream range, but I have quite a few of these body sprays. Um, you can actually get the notes for fresh cream because they have it in perfume form. So this says whipped cream, milk, powdery notes, sweet notes, floral notes honestly i think it kind of smells like again i said it it just doesn't sound lovely or sexy in any way but it's so comforting and beautiful it smells like a sweetened breast milk um like maybe with a hint of vanilla like it's just it's so creamy and sweet and comforting but it does smell very sort of skin like at the same time and it does it's got a very kind of homo sapien smell about it <laughs> anyway um i think it's delicious i wore it just before i went to bed the other day i'd um i'd been wearing something else throughout the day and then i had a shower because it was a really hot day and i was just like i think i'm just gonna smell totally lush if i put this on so yeah i was just like mm, i just needed to be cozy for some reason even though i had my fan on because it was so hot it's um yeah it's just a really nice one my my microphone is always trying to get really close to my face so i'm sorry if the levels jump on these videos but yeah it kind of it just keeps moving towards me and i have to keep pushing pushing it away so what else have we got this week let's go for Oh, well, let's go for these because um, as part of my big declutter, what I'm trying to do is test out things that I might have like the original and the flanker or a couple of flankers of or things that smell similar, you know, to see which one I want to keep. So I wore Hugo Woman by Hugo Boss, but I also wore, do, 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 do. I'm going to sniff this one as well oh god damn they're delicious um hugo extreme um so this is hugo I, it doesn't say it on it which is so annoying but it's hugo woman extreme so it's the extreme version of the original hugo woman extreme is a bit of a silly word for it although i definitely having worn them in this like within a few days of each other yes it is stronger than the original hugo it's a bit more noticeable it's a bit more syrupy and fruity, whereas Hugo's a bit more kind of sandalwoody and kind of a bit more vanillic, I think. I feel like it's vanillic, even though the notes would not suggest it is. I think... I think the notes that are listed for Hugo Woman, the original one, um, this is called Eau de Parfum, because actually I think the OG Hugo Woman came in a completely different bottle and had a different set of notes altogether. And probably if I look at those notes, it will match better with what Hugo Woman smells like to me. But what they actually tell you for Hugo Woman Eau de Parfum is top notes of boysenberry, Italian mandarin and grass, middle notes of plum, black tea and jasmine, and iris, base notes sandalwood, amber and cedar. So... If we look at the old version, which some people say doesn't smell anything like it, but I find I find Hugo Woman so <sighs> it smells like my childhood for some reason. There's something in it, and it's the one that has a very slight hint of Stella Pop. I mean, in a way, both of these do, and this one's a bit fruitier, but um yeah, there's just something in there that has a slight Stella Pop vibe to it. And so I do wonder if the Hugo woman that came in 
um if i just get it up i'll show you it had a different lid but it was very similar kind of thing and i've i definitely saw people with these so this is what the old hugo woman used to look like um i'm just going to look at the notes here and see and see what it's saying yeah it's got vanilla listed in this one and i swear let me just see Woof, it's got quite different notes listed here, but some similarities. So, top notes, Granny Smith Apple, Melon and Peach, Cyclamen, Cassis, Oak Moss and Papaya. Middle notes, Water Hyacinth, Lily, Jasmine and Orris Root. Base notes, Virginia Cedar, Sandalwood, Orchid, Vanilla, Resin and Amber. Now, in a way, that kind of makes more sense to how this perfume smells than the bows and berry and grass. Um... Yeah, I mean, I can totally get a vibe that there's a little bit more of a tropical fruit going on here. And I can definitely get a vibe that there might be something apple-y. I swear there's vanilla in the dry down of this. There's definitely sandalwood. I, did, I can smell the jasmine, absolutely. But yeah, that's really interesting because I think you've still got the iris. I think there is like plum. But yeah, I feel like this might be somewhere in between those old notes and what they actually list for it now. Um, and it's so beautiful i loved wearing it but it's very light i have a feeling that hugo woman this original eau de parfum one i think that this might actually be better in colder weather because my memory is that when i've tried it in colder weather when i first got it um it w it kind of was it had more of a sillage you know but i loved wearing it it was totally brilliant it's so good if you struggle with wearing strong perfumes or if you want something that's office safe it's grown up but not mature if you see what i mean it doesn't smell like an old-fashioned perfume even though to me it definitely smells like the 90s but it doesn't have that kind of oh that's a really that's a perfumey perfume smell about it um and it's kind of sweet it's got this slight vanilla tone like i said when it dries down i think it's really pretty and it's very easy to wear and actually this one is just a fruitier stronger version of that so I think the tea in these really lightens them up. So I can I can get a sense that there's tea, much more so in this one. So this one only lists Bosenberry Grass, Black Tea, Jasmine and Osmanthus. Um, but there's definitely still sandalwood in this. There's definitely, I'm pretty sure there's still some iris. Oh, it's just, it's absolutely lush, but the Bosenberry is really strong. So like it kind of makes me think of a far more grown up version of The Key by Justin Bieber. Um, not so shampoo, it's not shampoo at all. In fact, it's one of the wonderful things about it. But it has that same really strong, like sweet Bosenberry note in it that it has in The Key. But this doesn't smell like a celebrity perfume. It doesn't smell childish. I think it's incredibly pretty. Um, it gets really rinsed. Like the reviews of this is not good. And I think it's because it's called Extreme. But it's so pretty. Like I just basically i'm keeping both i mean that's what i'm it's boiling down to here is i can't bear to part with either of them they are quite similar but i feel like they're only 30 ml bottles they don't take up much space and i really like both of them so i'm just going to keep them um yeah i'm i just made that decision to not do a declutter because i just think it's delicious um <laughs> so yeah i failed with the decluttering there mm. okay and then i also wore um uh, what's the best place to put this it's a bit of a chunker isn't it i'm gonna put it over here for now so you can actually see what it is this is encanto bloom by salvatore ferragamo and this is i think it's like called 2012 version or something like that 2012 2019 i can't remember um it had a different lid but i think it was the same scent so Top notes here are freesia and grapefruit blossom. Middle notes are tea rose, raspberry and champaca. Base notes are musk and cashmere wood. And it's really pretty. It's a very simple rose perfume. Light, easy to wear. Again, really good if you don't like strong perfumes. If you don't... This is actually quite good if you're like... If you kind of want to get into rose perfumes. But a lot of them are a bit too dry, a bit too mature. This one is raspberry and rose. And that's pretty much all that you can in, like sense, to be honest. Like, um, Champaka is like, I th if I remember correctly, is kind of a pineapple-y kind of smell. Um, uh, let's see. A little bit of freesia, but I think mainly you get 
tea, rose, raspberry and musk. I think that's just like the main thing here. It's really light. It lasts for maybe four hours. It's pretty. I liked wearing it. It's not my favourite rose in my collection, but it is like super easy. I'd kind of put it on the same level, but like less, but maybe slightly more modern smelling um, than uh, Fleur Fatale by Kim Kardashian. It's that kind of rose, you know, really approachable, noticeably smells a bit like rose water in this really, really pretty way. So yeah, I mean, I think it's really nice. Um, I, I think it's a really good bargain as perfume. It's one that I do like, but it's not necessarily one that I'm planning to keep hold of. Let's do a little um, organization here. So then, how dark is this? Is it getting all dark? Let me just see. That's all right. Um, oh, I wore this at the weekend just because I just needed something clean and delicious. This is Jill Sander Sport Water for Women. One of the few Jill Sanders that has still remained in my collection. This one I have a backup of because I love it. So this is one that I plan to keep forever. Um, now sport water sport water is another tea perfume i do love a tea perfume and this is a weird one because this it took me a really long time to work out why i loved it so much but the reason i love it so much is because it smells like a sporty version of forever and ever dior by christian dior which is one of my favorite perfumes i've had that for maybe like 15 years now um it's so pretty it's like rose, jasmine, tea, peach, like there's some greenness. So the top notes are yuzu, peach and green leaves. You get a little bit of all of that. I think the peach is really watery here. So it's not like syrupy or sickly. It's not like powdery. It's just fresh. It's almost like peach juice, you know. Middle notes, tea, jasmine and rose. You definitely get a bit of rose, definitely get a bit of jasmine. Base notes, ambrette, woody notes and amber. And it just, it really does. It smells like a woody, um, slightly less feminine, slightly more sporty. E almost even fresher version of Dior Forever and Ever. And I'm not the only person to have said that it smells a bit like that. So I don't think it's my imagination. I think it's just a absolutely great perfume. Love it. Think it's beautiful. So yeah, that one. I might actually move these around, you know, because I feel like it's going to look a bit smarter if I just go in like this. That might be a bit more sensible, eh? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Okay. And then I might just put these. It's so beautiful. Look at these absolute beauts. I love it. All right. Now we're getting down to some random little bits. So I... Okay, I did say I'd explain. So I've got a bunch of Kaali samples here. And the reason I've got the Kaali samples is because... Um, my husband and I are going on our kind of honeymoon slash one year anniversary because we had our wedding that was already almost a holiday, but it was with our whole families and we never got to like have a little holiday, just the two of us. So we thought we might as well save up and do something nice. We're going, we're staying in the, in the UK, but we're going somewhere really nice. And I thought, well, there's, it's going to be very quiet there. Um, and I thought it might be fun to make some videos while I'm there for my YouTube channel. And as I'm going to be with my husband and we're not going to be disturbed by work or anything else, I thought it'd be really fun to get him to smell some popular perfumes, right? So not necessarily stuff that I like, just stuff that gets hyped up on YouTube or things that I happen to have um, uh, samples of, you know, um, and just see what he thinks about them. And they're not even necessarily things that I like, but I think it would be really fun to see what he thinks of kind of black opium, you know, all the stuff that that sells really well. Um, but I really, really wanted to get Yum uh, Pistachio for him to smell because people love that perfume. So I thought while I was doing it, I might as well get the wedding ones because I haven't been able to smell them. So, oh God. Ugh. All right, let's, <laughs> let's start with this one. Now I'm giving it a yuck instantly. Not because, again, like not because it's not a nice perfume. I imagine if this if it didn't have the synthetic note in it that it makes everything smell like tar to me, it's probably very pretty, but it does have the thing in it. And I don't think I've come across a Kaali that has that note in it before. So this says um, sparkling champagne, white freesia, pink praline, lush nectarine, sandalwood and sugared musk. So it's probably that musk, right? 
whatever this musk is, whatever it is in this perfume, straight up tar. So let me just give this a spray. Ugh, okay. First spray, I get the nice things. I get um, pink praline and champagne. That's what I can smell. Oh, and nectarine. So I can smell that. And it is quite sparkling. It is quite pretty. And then quite quickly, it gets sweeter and sweeter until it starts to smell like Baccarat Rouge and Cloud. So this is another one of those perfumes that smells a little bit like that kind of profile. Um, yeah, yeah, another one that has that same kind of smell. But I can see, I can see the prettiness at this point. I can, I can smell that kind of pretty vibe. And then, like, I mean, it's only just a little hint of it right now. It's just a little hint of that kind of tar, burnt rubber smell. But it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And then in the dry down, that's all I can smell. No idea what the deep dry down of this smells like because all I can smell is tar. So... I'm really sad because I think this would be a really pretty perfume. Um, I think, well, it probably is, but like, I would find it to be a very pretty perfume if it didn't have that stench in it. And I do call it a stench because it is literally ruining my life when it comes to smelling um, perfumes and smelling other people. I smell that tar smell everywhere, every day when I go out. Literally just on my road when I was crossing the road to get back to my flat yesterday, there was a lady walking her dog and she smelled like tar because it's it's in all perfumes can we just stop can we find something else i don't know what it is but i hate it <laughs> so i'm feeling like it probably is a musk <sighs> real shame because i really like these notes i think it's great i mean i think there's is it more extensive yes okay so it's more extensive on um, for grantica so it says top nose champagne freesia and black currant totally can get that vibe actually middle notes nectarine praline jasmine orange blossom and may rose um base notes vanilla sugar musk sandalwood amber wood and oak moss so i don't know is it like is it the musk is it some kind of fake wood is i don't know anyway it's very sweet um it's musky it's sparkling it's champagney uh, the vanilla's voted quite high up Maybe that comes out in the dry down because right now I'm getting praline. Do you know that black currant? It makes sense now. It does have a black currant, but I love black currant. Um, nectarine, black currant, praline, musk, and definitely sugar. Um, but the vanilla is not massively strong right now, so I imagine that just develops. But anyway, um, yeah, so that one, no good to me. It's full tar. So no to that. But I also got this one, and this is really interesting. So, the Wedding Velvet Santal. I think this is actually supposed to be unisex, is it? Um, they don't give you so many notes here. I think it's the same notes that it has. Yeah, it says tea, jasmine, cedarwood, white musk, sandalwood, and benzoin. Um, which I think is what they've got here as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's weird i sprayed this i was like oh that's really pretty i know that smell i have that smell it's really pretty though um it smells like a little bit like a lot of things you know how like i said um goddess from burberry it's like you can smell tiny little elements of lots of things but somehow this smells like a really beautiful version of all of those things this is very pretty um, it definitely leans a bit masculine, but I think I would happily wear it myself. I think it's super, super lovely, but it weirdly smells a bit like lavender. Um, <laughs> the top comparison is Mongolon, and I totally can see it. It's not... Um, it doesn't have the licorice. It doesn't have the patchouli. It's actually less spiky, a bit smoother, but it definitely smells a little bit like Mongolon, and Mongolon is very, very lavendery. So it's very pretty, though. It's also compared to um, what are they called? Not Mary Kate and Ashley. <laughs> Uh, I can't remember what the company's called, but it was called Nirvana Black. I think it's been discontinued. Um, but the Mary-Kate and Ashley uh, company, 
Uh, Nirvana Black is a sandalwood perfume. And I have they got like that? It's very, very sweet. I remember that. I remember that was pretty much the only one that I even considered buying a bottle of. But in the end, I didn't just because I already have sandalwood perfumes and wood perfumes that I love. And I didn't think I really needed that one. Does that have bourbon vanilla in it? Or is that another one? No, that's the, that's the, okay. That's the brown bottle. Okay, so how to get into this? It's... So what what I said is it smells like if you take the syrupy vibe and the sage from Sarah Jessica Parker's stash, the original one, and the sandalwood from Adam Levine, which is like Adam Levine for her, which is like a super smooth sandalwood. And then the lavender and vanilla from my chill out from oriflame from the feel good range which actually smells a bit like mongolon um and then chuck in some tea to make it smooth and a little bit lighter a bit fresher than all of those perfumes that's what this smells like it is so pretty i really like it i i, I gave both of these wedding ones to my husband to smell and he really was not impressed with this he did not like it at all he thought it was really boring he thought it was just sweet and kind of not interesting at all which I was quite surprised about I kind of figured he might have gone for it but um I don't think he's that interested in like vanilla perfumes or just straight up sweet perfumes I think he genuinely does find them quite boring so uh, fair enough but he said that he much preferred this one. He thought this was a much nicer perfume, but he does think it's quite masculine. And to be honest, I think that he thinks my chill out feel good ones probably quite masculine. But of course, but as he very sweetly said, but everything smells nice on you. So it, you know, it doesn't, <laughs> it wouldn't, he wouldn't necessarily recognize it as being masculine. I think he just thinks that my skin smells nice. So he thinks that most thing on me smells nice. I guess he, and also I know he thinks I've got quite good taste. So I think he trusts my taste in perfumes. I don't think he's ever really told me that he doesn't like something I'm wearing unless it's something I'm testing. Um, but yeah, I think this one is gorgeous. I'm going to have a quick look at what's in Nirvana Black. Um, because I, I was tempted to buy that perfume, but I decided not to. Oh, vanilla, is it? Sandalwood, vanilla and violet, I think, is it? Let's see. Yeah, and I can almost get the violet. There's definitely like a purpley herbalness in this. <laughs> but like, yeah, lavender, sagey kind of smell. It's so smooth and pretty. I mean... I would eat my husband in this. I would absolutely devour that man if he smelled like this. It's so pretty. And it's this one is going to be so lovely in cold weather. It's probably light enough that you could easily wear it in warmer weather. Maybe not hot. Yeah, sandalwood, vanilla and violet. And I think sandalwood and vanilla is the strongest note. Easily in Nirvana Black. Elizabeth and James. That's what it's called. Anyway, um, and the other one, so I did a little short on this because I was genuinely surprised. Oh, I don't have a, I don't have anything to spray it on. I'm going to have to spray it on me. Um, I don't mind doing that with this, actually. So, yum, pistachio gelato. So I haven't let him smell this one yet, but this is one that I smell again. I sprayed it on myself when I, ooh. Okay. Oh, I mean, it's really interesting. I feel like the colour of this has already changed. I got this um, at the beginning of the week um, and I sprayed it for the first time and it smelt. Can you see it's already got it looks quite dark. I don't think it looked like that when I first. I think it literally the air hits it and it changes. See, it's incredibly sugary <laughs> and it's only been a few days. So this is. Um, I mean, hang on, let me just read the big one. Now everyone obviously loves this perfume. Not everyone, a lot of people love this perfume. A lot of people that I love watching absolutely love this perfume. And increasingly, I now I've smelt it kind of fresh from the bottle and kind of when it's been sprayed lots and when it's actually macerated just a little bit, I get it more. Um, it still smells very synthetic to me 
but I do also quite like it. So the notes on Fragrantica say, there's so many, top notes, pistachio, ice cream, bergamot, hazelnut, rum, cardamom, middle notes, lady of the valley, pear, jasmine, peony, geranium, raspberry, and white peach. Base notes, whipped cream, marshmallow, cotton candy, luchum, which is like Turkish delight, tonka bean, sandalwood, cedar, and cacao. Now, the Turkish delight, the cream, the cotton candy, the pistachio, and the ice cream, that's what I was interested in here. And it is very pretty. I do get so much sugar in this. I do. Like, the way the votes are, are how I smell this, really. Which is pistachio, whipped cream, followed by marshmallow and ice cream, followed by cotton candy, and then bergamot. And I think that's right. And then there's, like, um, the hazelnut afterwards. And I think it's got a slightly heliotropy, almondy smell to it, too. Which is why I would say, if you're not wedded to the fact that there's also pistachio in this, you probably really, really like the one I've got, the Jeanne Arthez um, um, uh, Macaron Armand from the Tea Time of Paris, the one in the green bottle. Because it definitely has a similar vibe to that, but it also, to me, has quite a similar vibe to my Demeter pistachio ice cream, and I love that perfume. Yes, it's a bit synthetic, but it starts off smelling very realistically, to me, like a pistachio, like a very, very sweet pistachio. Then it gets a little bit creamier, and then it kind of smells like um, a marzipan-flavoured, very creamy ice cream with some pistachios just sprinkled on top and it really smells to me like a very creamy marzipan and I really really like that one I might have to go and compare that actually in a minute because I haven't pulled that one out for ages it's been kind of hidden since winter so maybe it's changed or we'll, we'll see but this one when I smelt it this week when I first sprayed it from the bottle it had that more floral and soapy smell that people were saying they really didn't like and I was like Oh my God, it smells so much fresher, so much lighter. I totally know what they mean by having a slightly cleaner soapy smell. But now, and also when I smelt it in Selfridges, when it, I smelt it from the tester bottle, I smelt it in there twice now. Once I sprayed it on my skin, once I just went and sniffed it and sprayed it on some card. It's definitely, it's definitely sweeter again and more creamy than it was when I smelt it when I first sprayed it. And I reckon by the time we smell this in September, it's probably going to be more of the level that I smelt it in um, Selfridges. So I feel like this is one that you have to like come back to. In fact, all of the Kaali seem to change quite a lot once you've sprayed them. Um, I feel like it's why sometimes I've thought that I liked them. And then when I've smelt them at a later date, I don't like them anymore because like <laughs> they've just, they've changed so much and they've deepened up so much. And some of the notes I don't like so much have really come through. Whereas um, I think this one, I kind of liked it better. <laughs> the way that people didn't really like it when it was a bit more soapy and a little bit more, um, kind of light and less creamy, less gourmand. I kind of liked it like that more than I like when it's, you know, really developed and it's got super sweet. So, yeah, interesting. I kind of wish it stayed the way that it was. But anyone who didn't like that, anyone who didn't like the soapy florals, maybe you should just like come back to it. Try your sample again or try the bottle again. Because my God, like it gets so sweet. It gets very, very, very sugary. But as I said, I do think the deep dry down of this smells a bit like Fantasy by Britney Spears, but with like cream and pistachio in there, you know. It definitely has a little bit of that vibe, but I like it much better at the moment. So I'm going to, it's going to be so interesting smelling that in September to see if it's got even more gourmand and sweet. Um, but yeah, so that was my little weird random Kaali run. Um, and I think that's it for, for this week. I think that's everything. No, no, no. One more thing. Okay. So when I went to Lush to look at the Barbie collection and to obviously buy the perfume, which I knew I was going to do, um, I also wanted to smell the Lush times glitter box um so glitter box i think is it some kind of nightclub or something i don't re i don't even know um i to be honest i haven't looked into it because i did not care for the body spray um the body spray is it says firstly it's got a shid load of 
um, actual glitter in it. Like it's literally full of pink glitter. So even though I sprayed it on the card, thank God, just putting it anywhere near my face, I managed to get some on my nose. And I was like, oh God. Um, I feel like I've smelt the smell before. I think it's probably been used before. So it says grapefruit oil and floral petty grain. Um, and the notes are pretty much that. I found it incredibly green and a little bit, I don't know, I just, it just smelled very, very green. Um, it did not, I was never going to spray this on my skin because it's full of glitter. It's just not my kind of vibe. Um, and it was, it smelled like garden leaves. It really smelled like petty grain and a little bit of citrus. And I didn't feel like there was much else going on, but it did kind of remind me of other things I've smelled in Lush that are very kind of green and a bit citrusy. I didn't think it smelled particularly original or interesting. Um, the other thing that I tried was furs. Um, that's one of the perfumes that they sell as their perfume library. I think, yeah, it's got like, I think it's one of the black label ones. So it's probably quite expensive. People talk about it smelling like coconut. And I kind of, kind of get a little bit of that vibe. But I sprayed it on my skin. I gave it like three big sprays. And then I went off to the tube. And I could smell it over everything else I'd I was wearing or that I'd been testing um it was super it was it wasn't super strong but it had like a really noticeable scent bubble it's kind of man it's hard to describe so it only lists mimosa and neroli but it's supposed to smell like gorse um which I think is called furs up north I think that's how people refer to it there is a very slight coconutty vibe to it in the same way you get like with, again, like Dolce Garden, same thing again. And the same way you get a slight, you know, you get coconut in here. And it's almost actually not that far off this kind of thing, but without any fruit. It's got like, it really, I don't really know what gorse smells like, so I can't come on, comment on that. But it is a list. I, I do get the vibe of wearing it like I'm walking through some kind of like field of quite heady pollen filled flowers um in a slightly dusty uh and sweetened way so like yeah so things like um perfumes that say they have pollen in this one to me has that kind of vibe that kind of polleny um powdery the very sweet floral slightly dusty sort of you know like magnolia that kind of thing you can get it with that that same kind of Dolce Garden vibe, but it gives a slight coconutty vibe in some way, even though it doesn't smell like coconut. Um, I think it's pretty. It's not something that I want to buy a bottle of, but I'm glad that I actually tested that one because it's been on my list to test for ages. I do think it's very pretty. If you like the idea of like a field of flowers full of pollen, if you like that idea, or if you like the smell of gorse or furs, as it's called, um, then I think furs is like a really pretty perfume. Um, I think for some people, depending on where you're from in the UK, I think it could really be very um, nostalgic smelling, if you see what I mean. So yeah, so that was the last thing. I have talked so much in this and I've been waffling on. But yeah, I've worn some really nice things. See that Kaoli one, it really does. It, it is not like massively strong but it really does create a scent bubble i'm wearing a different perfume today but that is what i can smell and i've got one tiny spritz from a little tiny sprayer so yeah i really do think that that's a pretty um i totally understand why people like it um i would happily get a bottle of that but i don't need it because like i said i've got so many things that smell a little bit like it but overall like lovely this one just doesn't work for me because it's got that horrible synthetic tar smell in it but there you go um yeah that was a fun week tell me what you've been wearing guys tell me what you think of these if you smelt them um but yeah I, I hope you have a gorgeous gorgeous weekend and i hope you have a lovely week ahead bye guys